Santo. Mashallah, la hawla, humala quwwata illa billah, ala aliyy al-azim. Hasbunallahu wa na'im al-wakil, na'im al-mawla wa na'im al-nasir. Rabbi shahli sadari wa yasilli amri, wa ahlu al-uqdatan min lisani yafkahu qawli. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي جعل الحمد مفتاحا لذكره وسببا للمزيد من فضله ودليلا على آلائه وعظمته ثم الصلاة والسلام وتحية والإكرام على النبي الأمي المكي المدني الهاشمي الذي سمي في السماوات بأحمد وفي الأرضين بأبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الأطيبين الأطهرين صيما أولهم أمير المؤمنين وآخرهم بقية الله في الأراضين روحي وأرواه العالمين لتراب مقدمه الفداء ورحمة الله على محبيهم ومواليهم وشيعتهم أجمعين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم وقتلتهم وغاسب حقوقهم ومنكر فضائلهم ملعونين أما بعد السلام عليك يا أهل بيت النبوة وموضع الرسالة ومختلف الملائكة ومحبط الوحي for the happiness of Hazrat Zahra in Marzia for the enlightenment of the graves of your marhumin of the graves of the shuhada ulama and siddiqin for the safety of the followers of Ahl al-Bayt around the world and for the safety and the hastening of the reappearance of Hazrat Baqiyatillahi al-A'adham arwahun al-Fida please recite your loudest salawat All praise you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who is Ahman, the one who is Ahim that Lord that placed us amongst the lovers of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. And indeed, this is such a path that even one tear for Imam al Hussein consumes all of your sins like fire consumes dry wood. Anything that you give in the way of Imam al Hussein. Brother Ali was mentioning and I thought it's a good time that whatever you give in the way of Imam al Hussein, Imam al Hussein doesn't keep it doesn't keep it Imam returns it back to you it is truly fascinating that for the ziyarat of Imams all other Imams or to go on Hajj it's not recommended that if you if you can't afford it then you don't go but in Karbala going for the ziyarat of Imam al Hussein is so recommended that they say Imam al Sadiq says that if you can't afford it Allah. 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 Imam Sadiq says, if you can't afford it, take a loan. And we, Ali Muhammad, are the guarantors for that loan. Imagine. Imagine the maqam of the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein. Imagine the level of that which you give in the way of Imam al Hussein. Be it time, 
be it your words, those that come up and recite, the younger brothers, all the effort that they put in to come up and recite. Their reward is immeasurable. Their reward cannot be comprehended in terms of this dunyavi world. But rather the rewards of it are in the batin, in the malakut, that place that we have been speaking about. And we've been looking at Ziyarat Jami'a Kabira to try and understand the maqam of Ahlul Bayt Because that maqam has largely been forgotten or exaggerated where someone was uh, speaking to someone earlier they put it nicely that we've made Ali Muhammad and we've raised certain people have raised Ali Muhammad to a maqam tawheedless without utilizing without having tawheed in mind and then there are others who have not given the importance to Ali Muhammad and thus have said no we need to be God centric and forget this whole system of wilaya it doesn't work like that this series looks to balance this and show you the true aqaid the whole system that has been placed here in this earth for us so we reached this part in the ziyara yesterday that we address Ahl al-Bayt as Mahbat al-Wahi that you, O Ali Muhammad, are the place of Wahi and we explained, and I'll go over very briefly, we went through the Holy Qur'an and we said that there are two types of Wahi that come on the human being although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also talks about Wahi uh, upon bees as well yeah, in Surah Al-Nahl but we're focused more on the wahi on the human being and there's two types the first type was wahi tashri'i or nabawi this is what was specific to the prophets of god and then there was wahi ilhami and we said that the only difference between wahi ilhami and wahi tashri'i or nabawi was that wahiya ilhami does not have sharia attached to it wahiya tashri'i that went to the messengers of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a sharia attached to it and we said that there were three methods that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used i wonder should i test <laughs> see how many people actually remember and give my voice a break as well we said there were three methods based around the ayah of the Holy Qur'an that Allah uses in order to send a wahi upon the human being. The first, direct, direct, direct wahiyun. This is a face-to-face -face dialogue, as it were. And we said that this only from amongst the Anbiya of Allah happened only for the Holy Prophet of Islam direct wahi in terms of the mi'raj that and uh, the Lord revealed unto him that which the Lord revealed yeah? so the mi'raj or then the last two ayahs of Surah Baqarah or the whole of Surah Ma'idah then we said the second method of wahi of revelation was what uh, through a barrier through a hijab ahsan min warai hijab from behind a barrier from behind a hijab i.e hazrat musa and the tree yeah and then the third method that the holy quran says is angels rusul angels messengers from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that comes in the form of angels etc so this was we reached this point and we said that this is the other type for normal human beings the types of wahi ilhami are exactly the same when it comes to ilhami all three methods are used however it requires a certain maqam and by and large very few human beings on this earth have had that direct 
direct uh, speech with direct wahi with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala other than the Holy Prophet and we left at this point we've now reached Ahlul Bayt what is the reason that we refer to Ahlul Bayt as Mahbat al-Wahi why is it that they are called the place of Wahi Ahlul Bayt receive Ilhami Wahi just like the human, other human beings. But what do we say about the ilham, the inspiration of the human being? Be it awaken or asleep, it holds no hujjiyah for us. It is not a proof on us. We can't say just because said uh, fulan alim you know, had a dream, then we must act according to that. Or fulan alim was divinely inspired, or fulan person was divinely inspired, thus this becomes hujjah for us. It doesn't. But when it comes to Ali Muhammad, the ilham that comes upon Ali Muhammad in all three forms has hujjiyat over us. The only difference between the wahi that goes to the Prophet of God and to Ali Muhammad is this, that there is no sharia ah that is brought to Ali Muhammad. Because the sharia ah completed with Rasulullah. But they are given ilham in terms, in regards of the philosophy of worship. In regards to the realities of this world. So it's explaining that. And their ilham is hujjah on us. Their ilham is hujjat on us. Harith ibn Mughayra, he comes uh, to one of the Imams, he says to him, Ya ibn Rasulillah, this knowledge that reaches you, how does it reach you? This knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have, how does it reach you? The Imam replies, Wahyun ka'ammi Musa. It's the same type of wahi that went upon the mother of Musa. Upon the mother of Musa, that divine inspiration. Remember, it's not tashri'i. There's no sharia in the, in the wahi that happens upon Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Shaykh al-Saduq in Khisal brings an interesting narration. He says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Ali bai, Ali bai. He says that the Holy Prophet of Islam says that there are five things that I have been given and five things that Ali ibn Abi Talib has been given. We're not going to go through all five. Uh, we'll just go through a couple. He says, وَجَعَلْنِي nabiya," And I have been made a prophet. وَجَعَلَهُ wasiya," And Ali has been made the wasi. And then he says, أَعْطَانِي اللَّهُ وَحْيٌ And Allah has bestowed me with wahi, has blessed me with wahi. وَأَعْطَى عَلِيًّا الْإِلْهَامِ And Ali has been blessed with ilham, has been blessed with ilham. So when it comes to the 14 Masumins, that wahi is no different to that of the Holy Prophet. It has hujjiyah, it just has no sharia. I'm, I'm reinforcing that over and over because we need to make that clear. There is no new sharia that comes with Ahlul Bayt alayhimu salam. They have the sharia that the Holy Prophet brought, but Allah divinely inspires them to explain the philosophies and the realities of that sharia and of existence. And all three methods are utilized. Direct, min wara'i hijab or through a messenger the places where Ahlul Bayt and we'll go through a few examples the places where Ahlul Bayt السلام, are spoken to directly let's say Imam al-Sadiq salawatullah wa salam hu alayhi says that one day Imam al-Sadiq is praying and he begins to say, Iyaka na'abudu wa Iyaka nista'een. And he's constantly saying it, Iyaka na'abudu, Iyaka na'abudu. And the Imam faints. When the Imam comes around, they say to him, Ya Abdul Rasulillah, what happened? He says, I said it so much that I heard the speaker himself saying it as well. 
Meaning who? The speaker being Allah. The, the Quran is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That I heard it from the speaker himself. So this direct contact without a hijab, without a rusul happens when it comes uh, in regards to Ahlul Bayt. Or then you have the angels that descend upon Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam And there is a, a, a chapter in many of our books of hadith that is named Babun, Babul Anna al-A'imma muhaddathun that the chapter in regards to the a'imma being muhaddathun, those who converse with angels. Muhaddathun, those who converse with angels. The imams alayhim salam would speak to angels and the angels would come and tell them things. Imam al-Baqir salawatullah wa salamu alayhim. Please recite another salawat. <laughs> Imam al Baqir, salawatullah wa salam, hey, that's a bit better. <laughs> Imam al Baqir, he, he says that someone's in front of him, sitting with his companion, he says, Ali on Muhaddath. Says that Ali was Muhaddath, Amir al Mu'mineen was Muhaddath. He would converse with the angels. The person that was sitting there, he says, Do you mean that Ali ibn Abi Talib was a prophet? Do you mean that Ali ibn Abi Talib was a prophet? The Holy Prophet, uh, the Imam al-Baqir says, no, he wasn't a prophet. Yeah, so he says that Ali was muhaddath, he used to converse with the angels. And so he says, do you mean that Ali was a prophet? He says, no, not that wahi that comes to a prophet, but rather it was the wahi that came to Khidr that he went to teach Musa because Khidr alayhi salam is not a prophet but he's going to an Ulul Azam prophet to teach him because of that ilham, because of that divine inspiration so he says no, Ali is not a prophet he's not a prophet but he received wahi ilham in the same way that Khidr alayhi salam would uh, receive it and after the death of the Holy Prophet, Jibra'il alayhi salam would constantly come towards Hazrat Zahra. 75 days, 95 days, depending on which narration of her shahadat you take. Regardless of that, every single day, Jibra'il would come down to the house of Hazrat Zahra and he would tell her of the things that were to happen, of all the things that were to happen. And she would relay it and Amir al Mu'mineen would write it down, that which is known as the Mus'haf of Fatima, which is handed down from one Imam to the other and it is now in the hands of the Imam of our time, Imam al Hujja Arwahun al Fida. And in regards to this, Imam Khomeini rahmatullah alayhi, he says, I find no greater virtue for Lady Zahra than this, that the Ulil Azam prophets of Allah never had this constant going back and forth of Jibra'il. Only every now and then he would come. It is only for Rasulullah that he would constantly come and then after the death of Rasulullah come constantly for Zahra and Marziyah says, I find no greater virtue for her than this. That Jibra'il would come. And he would constantly come, he would tell her of things that are to happen. But it's not like she did not know. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna raise the level again a little bit. Um, uh, please forgive me those of you that are already lost. Yeah. So I'm going to raise the level a little bit again. It's not like they, it's not that she did not already know. And a lot of people question this about Hadith Kisa. Now how is it Zahra and Marzia sitting here in the earth is relaying the conversation that is happening in the heaven only then for Jibra'il to come down and to say exactly the same words. 
So inshallah, if you're with me, slowly but surely, because this is the culmination of all those previous nights and those that are here for the first time, I apologize if this is going to go over your heads, but go back to the previous lectures and see how we've taken this journey step by step to understand the maqam of Ahlul Bayt, alayhum salam. Recite salawat. <laughs> So, we said what in the first lecture? There is Tawheed and there's the realm of Wilaya. Every single one of the phase of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must pass through the realm of Wilaya to come down to the earth. Nabuwa and, uh, Nabuwa and Risalat are branches of Wilaya. Everything passes through Wilaya. The one that is at the level of Wilaya, Tamma, receives all of the grace from Allah first and there is no separation between the wali tam the one that total wilaya and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather the wali tam is the separation between Allah and the rest of existence that is the wujud of the holy prophet yeah and the holy prophet is wali tam and then the nur of ahlul bayt alayhim salam alongside him so all of the faith of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala passes from Tawheed when his names manifest they manifest via the realm of Wilaya the Wali Tam takes it and then distributes it not in the physical realm in the Malakuti Batani realm of this world we said what are the faith of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said life he takes from Hay death from Mumit, Qudra from Qadr, Rizq from Raziq, Ilm from Alim. One of the phase of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ilm, is knowledge. Knowledge. So first and foremost, the Wali Tam takes that knowledge. Then that knowledge is then disseminated in the rest of the world. Now, when it comes to situations that present the Holy Prophet to the Holy Prophet, so now that we understand this actually, there is another level that we need to understand and that is this, that the Wali Tam is greater than anything in existence illa Allah except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes? The Wali Tam is the best of creation, the most perfect of creation, the one that manifests all of the characteristics of God in their absolute perfection. And He is the best and the highest of all creation other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes? So then we have a conundrum. And that is this. When the Holy Prophet is sitting here in, on, in the earth, or Ahlul Bayta and Jibra'il is coming down and telling them this telling them something the conundrum that presents itself is this that is he telling them something that they do not know if he is telling them something that they already do not already know then that gives him abdaliyah over Rasulullah that gives him Abdaliya, because we said the Waliya Tam is the most perfect and the highest of all of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no intermediary between the Waliya Tam and Allah and the realm of Tawheed. So if you put now Jibra'il in there, he's taking knowledge and he's bringing it down to the Holy Prophet. We've got a problem in our aqidah now. Because the Waliya Tam, like, because Jibra'il knows something that he doesn't know. Does that make sense? Yeah? So now how do we consolidate this? You see, I've been saying over and over the Malakuti form, the Malakuti form, the Malakuti form. The wujud of Ali Muhammad, the physical wujud came a thousand years ago or whatever. But then Nurani wujud, that's what is known as their primordial existence or as the Urafa and the uh, philosophers refer to Nur Muhammadi, the primordial light, the first of the creation of God was that light and that light itself is Qadim, is age old, 
is age old. And that batin of Ahlul Bayt and the Holy Prophet, I referred to it in passing a couple of majalis ago. The Urafa, they refer to it by different names. One of the names is Kitab al Mubin, the other name is Lohe Mahfuz. Lohe Mahfuz, the batin of Ali Muhammad. So, what is happening here? They are the primordial light in front of them. Creation was created. They have all this knowledge. Now from that wujud to this wujud, the knowledge is brought. When a situation presents itself, Allah reveals unto Lohe Mahfuz, the messenger Jibra'il goes, he reads it from Lohe Mahfuz, which is their batini wujud, and brings it down to their physical wujud. <laughs> Your silence tells me that it goes from their batin to their zahir. From their batin to the zahir. And this isn't any problem with Tawheed because we're saying Ali Muhammad are nothing. The Holy Prophet is nothing if it wasn't for Allah. Allah is manifesting all of his sifat into them. Everything that they have is because of Allah. Otherwise they themselves, Amir al-Mu'mineen, with all his greatness, is still saying, Mawla ya Mawla, until ghani wa ana al-faqeer. You are the rich and I am the poor. Wa hal yarhamu al-faqeer illa al-ghani. Then who else will have mercy upon the poor than that the one that is rich? I'll give you another example. It's the same. All of these different um, situations that you go through while you're young. Everything that you see is stored somewhere. You can't access it at times. You can't access it at times. But all of it is stored in your soul. Everything is stored in your soul, which is the real you, which is the real you. I was just saying this in uh, Nottingham a bit earlier, that I was saying that, what are you? Who are you? Describe who you are. And you will say, well, I'm this tall. Uh, I have my hair is like this. I have eye color. I'm, uh, I like this. I dislike this. But if I was to chop off one of your legs, would you still be you? Yeah, you would. If I chopped off your other arm, you'd still be you. If I disfigured your face so badly beyond recognition, would you still be you? Yeah, of course you would. So that leads us to believe that the you is different to who I think is me. My me is actually something else then what I see in the mirror is beyond the physical. The real existence is that which exists in the malakut, in the batin of this alam. Which exists just out of reach. Not out of reach, it's just a thin barrier. Al-qalbu yataraddadu bayna al-mulki wal malakut. The heart will take you between the mulk and the malakut. The spiritual heart, not this cholesterol-filled thing pumping. The spiritual heart will take you between. So when it comes, your soul stores all of this information. When you're presented with a situation, you, you want to have an intellectual discussion. You put some sort of pressure on your mind and you're like, I'm trying to recall this piece of information. I need to recall it. And so what happens is that your soul searches searches it finds a particular piece of information sometimes it, it can't your brain won't allow it to so the soul searches finds a particular piece of information presents it your brain rationalizes it brings it forward and your tongue utters it yeah this whole purpose this whole system of thought and bringing that which you already knew your soul is almost like your lohi mahfuz it stores everything that you have ever seen this is why the holy quran says that on the day of judgment they themselves will be enough to judge themselves for the soul stores every single thing that you have done every single thing their souls themselves will be enough to judge them 
they themselves will say some people just walk in and go yeah I'm going to hell <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just make my own way <laughs> I don't want to inconvenience you guys <laughs> so, so some people are so rotten that it's just so apparent for them this is like okay I better go so that soul is the store of your information as if your own lohe, your own personal lohe mahfuz in order to search it your mind searches it or your soul searches that store of information brings it forward the batani wujud of Ali Muhammad is lohe mahfuz Jibra'il is the thought process when they're presented with the situation need an answer for it he goes to their batin where it may have been revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or been stored from the primordial light he reads it from there he comes brings it from the malakut and he brings it into alim wujud he goes he utters it to them and they utter it as words it comes from their wujud to their wujud from their wujud to their wujud because how else can it be any other way? What other way is there? They are the ones that taught the Malaika. Now will Jibra'il come and teach them? They're the ones that taught the Malaika. In volume number 26 of Biharul Anwar, Alama Majlisi has a chapter called The Greatness of an Nabi, the Holy Prophet of Islam, and his Ahlul Bayt over the angels. Over the angels. And there's a number of beautiful uh, hadith alayhi salam, but uh, hadith alayhi salam, sorry, I read something on the, my iPad. There are a number of beautiful hadith about Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. See, my mind is, <laughs> my, or oh, my tongue's going faster than my mind. Uh, there are a number of good hadith there. I've selected a couple that I'm going to share with you today to illustrate the fact. So there's one hadith from Amir al-Mu'mineen salawatullah wa salamhu alayhi. One day he's sitting with Rasulullah and he says to him, Ya Rasulullah, فَأَنْتَ أَفْضَلُ أَوْ جِبْرَائِيلُ He says, Ya Rasulullah, are you greater or is Jibra'il greater? Are you greater or is Jibra'il greater? فَقَالَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ And the Holy Prophet says, يَا عَلِي إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى فَضَّلَ أَنْبِيَاءُهُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ Allah has given the Anbiya Mursal, the Ulil Azam Prophets, greatness over the Malaika Al-Muqarrab. Malaika Al-Muqarrab before. Four Muqarrab Malaika. We said, when we talked about Mukhtalif Al-Malaika, they have no form. These, these Muqarrab angels. Who are they? Jibra'il alayhi salam, Mika'il, Israfil, Israel. Yeah? Says Allah has given these Malaika, uh, these uh, Prophets, these Rasul, greatness over these Muqarrab Malaika. وَفَضَّلْنِي عَلَى جَمِيعِ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالْمُرْسَلِينَ And Allah has given me virtue over all of the Prophets and all of the Messengers. Over all of them. وَالْفَضْلُ بَعْدِي لَكَ يَا عَلِي وَالْأَئِمَّةِ مِنْ بَعْدِكِ And this fadl, this virtue, will pass to you after me, Ya Ali, and to the Imams from your lineage. وَإِنَّ الْمَلَائِكَ لَخُدَّامُنَا وَخُدَّامُ مُحِبِّينَ And surely the Malaika are our servants and the servants of our muhibbin, of our lovers. Ya Ali, alladheena yahmiloon al-arsh wa man hawlahu yusabbihoon bihamdi rabbihim wa yastaghfiroon lilladheena amanu bi wilayatina. O Ali, those who bear the power and those around him celebrate the praise of their Lord and believe in him and ask for protection for those who believe in our wilaya, in our wilaya. So how is it possible that the malaika can be greater than us, Ya Ali? And then the Holy Prophet carries on. And he says, and before them, we were the ones that had the ma'rifah of Allah. We were the ones that had the ma'rifah of Allah. We did tasbih of Allah. We did tahleel of Allah. We did taqdis of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Holy Prophet said, ثُمَّ خَلَقَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ فَلَمَّ شَهَدُوا أَرْوَاحُنَا نُورًا وَاحِدًا And then Allah created the angels. 
Then Allah created the angels and they saw our souls that were a single light. Nuran wahida. There was no spirit. All of our souls, the souls of Ahlul Bayt, the Holy Prophet and his holy household, were a single light. Were a single light. Nuran wahida. They saw our status, the Malaika. Ista'adhamu amrana. They saw our status and thought we were God. Listen very carefully what the Holy Prophet said. And thought we were God. Fasabahna lita'allama al malaika anna al khalqun makhluqun wa annahu munazzahun an sifatina. We then, when we realized that the malaika were looking towards us in that way, we said, Subhanallah, so that the malaika would know that we are only created beings and are the servants of Allah and that Allah is greater than all that we have. Have. So the Malaika also said Subhanallah and understood God to be separate from our characteristics. But then when the Malaika looked and they saw our greatness, we realized that they were looking and seeing our greatness. We started saying, La ilaha illallah. So the malaika would know that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are just his servants. And only he is worthy of worship. Says, and so they began to say, La ilaha illallah. Falamma shahidu kibara mahallina. كَبَّرْنَا لِتَعَلَّمِ الْمَلَائِكَةَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ أَكْبَرَ Says when they saw our great position, our greatness, they again became confused. So we said, Allahu Akbar. We taught them takbir so that they would know that Allah is greater than us. And that position is solely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the malaika learnt and they too said Allahu Akbar, realizing the position of Allah. فَلَمَّا شَهِدُوا مَا جَعَلَهُ لَنَا مِنَ الْعِزِّ وَالْقُوَّةِ And when they saw our izzat and our power, our honor and our power, and they became awed by us. We called out, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. We told the malaika, There is no power in this world. Illa billah. So the malaika also began to say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Falamma shahidu ma an'ama Allahu bih alayna. And when they viewed the na'ma that Allah has bestowed upon us. Again, when we realized that they were looking in awe towards these na'ma, we began calling out, Alhamdulillah. So that the malaika would know that none is worthy of thanks but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they said, Mala so they said, Alhamdulillah. So through us, now the Holy Prophet says, فَبِنَا إِحْتَدَوْ إِلَى مَعْرِفَةِ تَوْهِيدِ اللَّهِ Through us, the malaika were guided towards the ma'rifah of tawheed, of the oneness of Allah. And through us, they they learnt how to say tasbih, how to say la ilaha illallah, how to say alhamdulillah, and how to say Allahu Akbar. Ya Ali, how is it possible then that the malaika could be greater than us? How is it possible that the malaika could be greater than us? The maqam of Ahlul Bayt is huge. The Holy Prophet and Ahlul Bayt is beyond comprehension. Beyond comprehension. How is it possible then that the malaika are coming down to teach them? It's not possible. It's not possible. They don't come down to teach Ahlul Bayt I wonder if you're ready to go one step higher. 
Not only are they the teachers of the Malaika, but the Malaika were created from their Nur. <laughs> Listen to this hadith. It's a very lengthy tradition. The Holy Prophet talks about the creation of the world and everything, the primordial light. When it comes to this, he says about their creation, of the creation of Ahlul Bayt. No? Uh, what is that? The recite Salawat, please. Someone's pacemaker is talking to them. <laughs> Someone, your podcast is on. <laughs> that isn't classified as wahi. So, the Holy Prophet, the angels are not greater than Ali Muhammad. But even one step above that, they were created by from the nur of Ali Muhammad they're the reason for the creation of the angels the hadith says the holy prophet says Allah created us while there was no vast sky and there was no earth there was no throne and there was no heaven, there was no hell. And we were the ones that would do tasbih of him when there was none to do tasbih of him. We were the ones that would praise him while there was none in existence that could praise him. Allah Akbar. Ya Rasulullah Says that we would do tasbih of him when there was none to do tasbih of him, we would praise him when none existed to praise him. فَلَمَّا أَرَادَ Allah. But when Allah made the irada, made the intention, فَلَمَّا أَرَادَ Allah بَدَأَ صَنْعَةِ فَتَقَ نُورِ Whenever, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the intention to create, فَتَقَ نُورِ He split my nur. He split off from my nur. فَخَلَقَ مِنْهُ الْعَرْشِ And from it he created the arsh. فَنُورُ الْعَرْشِ مِنْ نُورِ And the nur of the arsh is from me. وَنُورِ مِنْ نُورِ اللَّهِ And my nur is from the nur of Allah. وَأَنَا أَفْضَلٌ مِنَ الْعَرْشِ And I am greater than the arsh. ثم فتق النور علي بن أبي طالب فخلق منه الملائكة الله decided then to break off from the نور of Ali he broke away a part of the نور of Ali and from that he created the ملائكة فنور الملائكة من نور علي بن أبي طالب the نور of the ملائكة is from the نور of Ali والنور علي من نور الله and the نور of Ali is from the نور of Allah وعلي بن أبي طالب أفضل الملائكة and علي بن أبي طالب أفضل من الملائكة and علي is greater than the ملائكة وفتق نوره وفتق نور ابنتي فاطمة and then Allah decided to break away break apart from the nur of فاطمة الزهراء سلام الله عليها
ومنه فخلق السماوات والأرض and from the نور of فاطمة he created the skies and the earth فنور السماوات والأرض من نور ابنة فاطمة and the light of the heavens the light of the skies and the earth is from the light of my daughter فاطمة ونور فاطمة من نور الله but the light of فاطمة is from the نور of الله وفاطمة and Fatima أفضل من السماوات والأرض Fatima is greater than the skies and the earth ثم فتق نور الحسن so then he intended and broke from the نور of الحسن ثم فتق نور الحسن فخلق منه الشمس والقمر and from it he created the sun and the moon فنور الشمس والقمر من نور الحسن ونور الحسن من نور الله والحسن أفضل من الشمس والقمر The light of Hassan is from the light of Allah and Hassan is greater than the sun and the moon ثم ثم فتق نور الحسين عليه السلام فخلق منه الجنة وحور العين and so he splits from the light of Hussein, a light from which he created Jannah and the Hurul Ain. Fanurul Jannah wal Hurul Ain min Nur al Hussein. And the Nur of Jannah and the Hurul Ain is from the Nur of Hussein. Wal Hussein, Nur al Hussein min Nur Allah. And the Nur of Hussein is from the Nur of Allah. And so Hussein is greater than both Jannah and the Hurul Ain. Hussein is great. And so Hussein is greater than Jannah and the Hurul Ain. So it is fitting that says in the Hussein. باب من أبواب الجنة. Surely Hussein ibn Ali is a door from the doors of Jannah. The fastest way into Jannah is through the door of Hussein. Is through the path of Hussein. And if you want to reach Hussein, you need to go through a door. The door of Abbas. Abbas What can one say about Abbas? Abbas alayhi salam The one that the maqatil refer or the ziyarat because has it Abbas is ziyarat ma'asura that is directly from an imam Assalamu alayka ayyuha al-abdu al-salih al-muti'u lillah wa li-rasooli wa li-amir al-mu'mineen wa li-l-hasan wa li-l-husayn Abbas, you are that abdu al-salih that was obedient towards the Holy Prophet towards Amir al-mu'mineen towards al-hasan al-husayn and that's why Abbas became Bab al Hawa'ij. Because Abbas put aside all his own desires for the sake of his master. There are many people in this room that are not Shia, but you have come for the night of Abbas with hope in your heart. And it is the reality that Abbas gives to everyone. Because Abbas is the door to Hussein, Hussein is the door to Allah. There are people that have come here with hajat for children, for those that are ill. Everyone waits for the night of Abbas. Everyone waits for the night of Abbas. 
Abbas alayhi salam doesn't look at Shia or Sunni. Abbas doesn't look at Muslim or non-Muslim. You come to the door of Abbas, you will be granted. And I will guarantee this, that you will get what you have come for. All of you that have gathered here at the door of Abbas with your hajat. Just don't forget Abbas once you have got what you wanted. Fulfill the right of love. Fulfill it. Think about who this Abbas is. He will give to you. And after you have gotten what it is that you wanted, just sit for a moment and think about Abbas. There was a Christian in Iran. He says that my daughter was terminal. And the doctors had said that she's going to die. There's nothing we can do for her. Take her home. Let her spend her last few moments, few days at home with you. He says, so I brought my daughter home. Seven, eight years old. She was dying in front of me. So, so I sat around for a while and I just couldn't bear it. I didn't want my wife or anyone in the house to be upset. So I got up and I left. Says I came out in the streets not knowing where, I'm just wandering blindly. We tried every dro doctor in the world, every prayer that we had, we tried. To no avail. Says I didn't know where I was going to go, what I was going to do. I just walked. My heart was heavy. Says as I walked past one of these places, from inside I heard someone chanting Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein. People chanting Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein. Says I stopped there for a moment. And I saw people were going in, so I went in as well. It says when I went in, I saw that people were around and there was a dharih that was placed there and they were all crying and saying, Ya Hussein, Wa Abbasa, Wa Abbasa. It says I was intrigued. So I said to one of the young men that were there, I said, what are you all, what are you doing here? He says, are you not a Muslim? Don't you know? He says, no, actually I'm not. So I'm a Christian. He says, what are you doing? He says, we've created, we've made this dari. It is to go to Iraq upon the grave of Al-Abbas. And so we're doing matam as a wida to it. He says, who is Abbas? says, you don't know, let me tell you, Abbas. says, and he gave him the whole story of Al-Abbas. Abbas was in Karbala. His brother Hussein, they gave his life for Hussein. And he says, and we call him Babul Hawaij. says that whenever we have a request, we come to the door of Abbas. This Christian says, I said to him, does your Abbas only help Shias? Or do you think that your Abbas will help me as well? He says, no, Abbas and Hussein are for everyone. Whoever comes to their door. He says, so I just went towards that dari. I said to him, Abbas, I don't know who you are. I've only just found out about you. But Abbas, my daughter is ill at home. For the sake of your master Hussein. For the sake of your master Hussein. Abbas, please help me. Help my daughter. So I said this. And I left. So I began to walk home. So as I reached my house, I saw there were people lined up outside. And I realized my daughter had died. So, so I was preparing myself to see the dead body of my daughter. So as I walked up the stairs to the house. And there were people lining up and they're all looking at me dumbfounded. He says, 
I just kept my head down, preparing myself for that image. He says, I entered into the house. And he says, my daughter came running towards me. She came, she held me, Baba, Baba, where did you go? He says, I didn't know, I began crying. And I held on to her, I said, what happened? What happened? She says, I felt as if I was going to die, I was dying. And there were angels that had come to take my soul. He says, they took it from my body. He says that as they were taking me, someone stood in the way and said, no, let her go back. Let her go back. It is not her time yet. Send her back to the world. And they said, no, we've been told. He says, no, her father gave me the wasila of my brother Hussein. Send her back. Says his father, my soul came back and I woke up and I realized all of my pain, my illness had all gone. Then the girl began to cry. Her father says to her, what is it? Why are you crying now? You're better. Says, father, one thing I can't understand. A man with so much virtue, a man with so much magnanimity. Father, he was so loving. But father, I don't understand why he had no arms. Why he had no arms. From the moment Abbas was born, he heard, Abbas, you are for Karbala. In the battle of Sifin, 13 years old, when Abbas goes out and fights for a while, Imam Hussein calls him, says, Abbas, irji'i ila al-khayam. Abbas returned back to the tents. The companions say, Aba Abdullah, ya Amir al muminin if you have a weapon like Abbas amongst us, why don't you use this Abbas? Imam says, no, innahu zukhrin lil Hussein. This is the zakhira of my Hussein. This is the treasure of my Hussein for Karbala. All his life, Abbas heard, Abbas, you are for Karbala. Abbas, you are to give your life for Imam al Hussein. Abbas grows hearing this. Until one day his brother Imam al Hussein says, Abbas, we're leaving Medina. Abbas doesn't question. They go to Mecca, outside of Mecca, for a few months. Then Imam al Hussein says, Abbas, we're leaving Mecca as well. He doesn't say anything. They go along the way. The army of Hur meet them. They reach this place, Karbala. Abbas, this is our place. He doesn't say anything. Abbas pitched the tents. They pitched the tents by the bank of Furat. Seventh of Muharram, Umar ibn Sa'ad forces them away. Imam says, Abbas moved the tents. It's okay. Abbas. Abbas who knew he was for Karbala. But he was so drowned in the love and submission to his Mawla. He didn't question. Abbas moved the tents. Shabi Ashur. They wanted to start the battle early. In fact, the uh, army of Umar ibn Sa'ad had started fighting, uh, firing arrows. Imam al Hussein turns to his commander and his general. He says, Abbas, go ask for one extra night. Inni uhibbu salah. Because I, Hussein, love to pray. I love to pray salah. Abbas go ask, it's very difficult for the commander of an army, a man whose bravery is known, to go and stand in front of the army and say, please, one more night. But Abbas did it. This is why Abbas becomes Bab al Hawa'ij. The day of Ashura dawns. And Abbas is the general and the flag bearer. He arranges the whole army. He sends them out in contingents to fight. A few go one on one to fight. One by one, all of the companions are killed. Abu Fadl al Abbas comes to Imam al Hussein. Says, Ya Hussein, please, my brother, give me permission to go out and fight. 
Imam al Hussein looks towards Abbas. He says, Abbas, anta sahibu liwa'i wa anta kibshu katibati. Abbas, you are the flag bearer of my army. Abbas, you are the commander of my army. My brother, how can I let you go? Ali Akbar goes and is killed. Qasim goes, Aun and Muhammad go, the children of the household of Ja'far go, the children of the household of Aqil go. Abbas alayhi salam prepares three of his own brothers. He says, my brothers, do not cause me shame in front of our brother Imam al Hussein. Go and fight until your deaths. Abbas stands and watches the fight of all three of his brothers. The sons of Umm al-Baneen. The sons of Umm al-Baneen. One by one they die. Abbas again comes to Imam al Hussein. Says, give me permission to go out and fight. Imam again repeats the same lines. Abbas, anta sahibu liwa'i wa anta kabshu katibati. Abbas, you are the flag bearer of my army. Abbas. You are the commander of my army. How can I let you go? Some say that Abbas said something at this point. But knowing the life of Al Abbas, even the maqatil don't say anything. Abbas didn't say anything. But the tears began to stroll down the eyes of Abbas. Those tears that strolled down called out, Where is that army for whom I am the commander, my brother? Where is that army? Or oh, then it was at that very moment that the children began crying loudly. Al-Atash, Al-Atash, Al-Atash. How oh, thirst, how oh, thirst. Imam al Hussein looks towards Abbas, he says, Abbas, if you must go, then let us both go and bring water for the children. The maqatil say Imam al Hussein and al Abbas both mounted upon their horses and they both rode out into the battlefield. Aim was to reach the Furat to bring water for the children. As they came out and began fighting their way to the Furat, the army of Umar ibn Sa'ad realized that if both brothers are together, we will not be able to defeat them. So they made a plan to drive a wedge of men between Hazrat Abbas and Imam al Hussein. So they drove a wedge, a contingent of men between both of them, forcing Imam al Hussein back to the tents and leaving Al Abbas all alone. Abbas carries on. Imam al Hussein forced back to the tents. He's forced to watch the battle of his brother from afar Abbas fights his way to the banks of the Furat now as Abbas comes into the cool waters of the Furat Abbas picks up the water some say Abbas intended to drink it no Abbas would never drink it Abbas wanted to show that what is the maqam of Abbas what is the level of control of Abbas? He picks up the water. He looks at it. Ya nafs, min ba'd al huni. Oh my nafs, what pleasure is there left in this, in this world after the death of Abu Abdullah? What pleasure is there left in this world after Hussein? Oh Abbas, will you drink this water while your master drinks the syrup of death? Abbas throws it down to show the army that Abbas is not muhtaj. Abbas does not require the water. He takes the bag of water that he has on his shoulder. He fills it up. He places it back on his shoulder mounts upon his horse he turns his face towards the Khayyam he begins riding back fighting his way as he passes some date palms they realize that we can't beat Abbas face to face or in one on one combat one Mal'oon hides behind a tree as Abbas rides by he strikes the right arm of Abbas severing the arm of Abbas Abbas calls out Wallahi in Kata'atu 
ارموا يميني اني احامي ابدا عن ديني by Allah even if you cut the right arm of Abbas I will not stop defending the religion of Islam Abbas carries on riding another man from hiding behind the tree on the left strikes the left hand of the arm of Abbas the arm severed from the body of Abbas Abbas says to himself Ya nafs la takhshal kuffar Abbas don't let the kuffar make you afraid you focus on your aim Abbas's sole aim is to get to the tents of Imam al Hussein. Hurmala says that I realized the heart of Abul Fadl was in that water bag I took aim at the bag I fired my arrow the arrow pierced the bag of water the water began to flow upon the ground فوقف الأباس the Maqdal says فوقف الأباس Abbas stopped his horse Abbas stopped his horse when Abbas stopped his horse Umar ibn Sa'ad ordered 4,000 archers to fire towards the blessed body of Ali Abbas. 4,000 archers fired towards Abbas. Abbas is being peppered with arrows from the sky. Abbas is struggling to stay upon his horse. Hormala fires an arrow. The arrow embeds itself in the eye of Abbas. Abbas Abbas tries to remove the arrow, but Abbas has no arms. So Abbas bends down towards his knees. He tries to use his knees to pull the arrow from his eye. And they say one Malone seeing Abbas bending down came from behind with an iron bar and he struck the head of Abbas. Abbas fell towards the ground. <laughs> Say the Zahra came in the dream of an alim once. She said, Alim, you recited the Masaib of my Abbas, my son Abbas. But you did not recite his greatest Musiba. Says Sayyidah, I recited that Abbas was thirsty. She said, no, this wasn't his greatest musibah. Says Sayyidah, I recited that Abbas's arms were cut. She says, no, this was not his greatest musibah. He says, Sayyidah, I recited Abbas's eye was struck with an arrow. She says, no, Alim, this was not his greatest masaib. He says, Bibi, what was his greatest masaib? She says, oh, Alim, whenever you go and recite the masaib of my Abbas, Abbas, when you recite that Abbas came down from his horse, tell the crowd that, oh people, when every other rider fell from his horse, he broke his fall with his arms. But my Abbas had no arms. So when Abbas fell, for Abbas fell upon his face. There was an arrow in the eye of Abbas. As Abbas falls from the horse, he calls out, Ya Akha, Adarik Akhaq, Oh my brother, come to the aid of your brother. <laughs> when Abbas fell and he called out, there were four cries that were heard in Karbala at the same time. Abbas called out, Ya Akha, Adarik Akhaq. Oh brother, come to the aid of your brother. When Abbas called out, the first cry came from Imam al Hussein himself. He called out, Alan in Qasr al Now the back of Hussein has been broken. <laughs> the second cry came from the tent of Zainab. <laughs> when she heard that Abbas had fallen, they say Imam al Hussein shouted out, Allah in Qasr al Dahri. He ran towards the tent. He said, Zainab, they've killed my brother. 
as I am hearing this, she says, now I know what my father Ali meant, that there would come a time where my hands would be tied and I would be taken as a prisoner to Kufa. The third cry came from the army of Yazid. When they saw that Abbas had fallen, they called out, attack the tents of Hussein, for Hussein is Gharib. Now Hussein is truly alone. He no longer has his Abbas. The fourth and last cry came from a four-year-old girl who called out, oh Uncle Abbas, come back, I won't ask for water again. <laughs> Abbas fell to the ground upon his face, arrow embedded in his eye. Abbas fell, the arrow pushed further into the head of Abbas. <laughs> Imam al Hussein came to the body of Abbas. The Maqatil say when Hussein reached Abbas, Abbas's soul had already left his body. Well, Hussein, Qa'imun ala ra'sil Abbas, Abu Abdullah stood over the head of Abbas. He began calling out Abbas, Oh my Abbas, Abbas, that I that would stay awake out of fear knowing that you are alive today will sleep in peace and Abbas that I that would sleep in peace knowing that you are alive meaning the daughters of Ali and Zahra Abbas that I that would sleep in peace knowing that you are alive today that I will stay awake in fear Imam al Hussein stood at the body of Abbas. They say Imam said this. He looked down towards the body of Abbas. Fabakal Hussein Bukha and Shadida. Hussein began wailing loudly. We had never heard Hussein cry so loudly as he cried at the body of his brother Abbas. But Imam al Hussein stood. Why is it Hussein stood? Why is it he stood? See, when he went to the body of Akbar, you will hear in the Masaib, he threw himself on the body and he laid down with his Akbar. When he went to the bodies of Aun and Muhammad, he sat down on the ground with them before bringing them back. When he went to the body of Qasim, he stood there a while addressing Qasim before he brought him back. When he went to the body of Joan, he went to the body of Hur. Hussein alayhi salam sat. But now he's at the body of his Abbas. He's standing. He's standing. And then he rushes away. Why is it Hussein did this? They say because when he went to the body of his Akbar, and the body of his Qasim, and Joan, and Hur, and Habib, he knew that my Abbas is still alive and in the tents. <laughs> he knew that his tents were safe. <laughs> but now his Abbas lies on the ground in front of him. <laughs> ya Abba Abdullah, why didn't you bring back the body of Abbas? Last part of the Masaib. Those of you that have hajat, those of you that have wishes at the door of Abbas, those that have yet to shed a tear for Imam al Hussein, this final point for you. They say, why is it that Abbas's body was not brought back by Imam al Hussein? Say the first reason could be. That Imam al Hussein said, Alan in Qasara Bahari. Now my back has been broken. The strength from Hussein has gone. A 35 year old brother. How will Hussein lift him? 60 year old Hussein. 35 year old Abbas. Alan in Qasara Bahari. The strength has been taken from the back of Hussein. They say the second reason could be. 
that the army of Yazid had called out, attack the tents, Hussein is gharib. His Abbas is dead, attack the tents. So Imam al Hussein was in a hurry to come back towards the tents. Others have said that Abbas may have done a wasiyah. If I die out there, don't bring my body back. But what is more reliable in my eyes and based upon what the maqatil say, it is this. For those that have hajat, those one last tear for an Abbas. Say, why is it that he didn't bring back the body of Abbas? Maybe he wanted to get back to the tents. Maybe it was the will of Abbas. Maybe the strength had gone from the body of Hussein. But when we look at the maqtal, it says something very different. It says when Umar ibn Sa'ad ordered 4,000 archers to fire at Abbas, Abbas's body was peppered with the arrows. Abbas struck on the head with the iron bar. He fell to the ground. He called out to Imam al Hussein in the time that Hussein took to reach the body of Abbas. They surrounded the body of Abbas. They mutilated the body of Abbas with their swords. That even if Hussein wanted to lift the body of Abbas, if he lifted him from the left, the right would fall away. If he lifted him from the right, his left would fall away. Allah for the sake of Babul Hawaj Ya Allah Forgive our sins. Ya Allah, forgive the sins of our parents. Ya Allah, those of our parents that are alive, give them long lives. Those of our parents that have left this world, give them a place next to Ali Muhammad in Jannah. Ya Allah, those that have brought hajat on this night. For the sake of Babul Hawaj, for the sake of Abbas, Ya Allah, don't turn them away. Fulfill their hajat. Ya Allah, those who are ill, specifically those that have asked us for dua, Ya Allah, give them total shifa. Ya Allah, hasten the reappearance of the Imam of our time and allow us to be amongst his true mantethering, his true waiters, Matameh Hussain. Abbas, Ya 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 मैं सदा देती रही तू न आया गाजी जब रिदासर से चिनी मैं सदा देती रही तू न आया गाजी जब रिदासर से चिनी मैं सदा देती रही Ale Imran Kaha or Zindan Kaha Le Ben Ked Hui Tunaya 
जबरदास से छनी मैं सदा देती रही तू न आया जबरदास से छनी मैं सदा देती रही तू न आया हमको पानी खुशबू तो रहे तेरे बाजू ना कटे चाहे मशकी जाच दे ये मगर हो ना सका तेरे बाजू है जुदा मुझ पे है तश नल भी तू ना आया जबरदास से छनी मैं सदा देती रही तू न आया जबरदास से छनी मैं सदा देती रही तू न आया धूप में दूध सुज तुझसे आबाद का गए है बरहना मेरा सर क्या नहीं तुझ को खबर ए अलमदार वफा इस बहन को बाखुदा तुझ से दारस थी भरी तू न आया जबरदास से छनी मैं सदा देती रही तू न आया जबरदास से छनी मैं सदा देती रही तू न आया क्या कहूँ शेर मेरे बेरी दाह को लिए ये मुसलमान सारे शहर दर शहर गए खिलखत कुफा कभी खिलखत शाम कभी और हाँ हम पे हसी तू न जबरदास से छनी मैं सदा देती रही तू न आया आल इमरान ने कहा और जिंदा ने कहा ले बहन के दे हुई तू न आया गाजी जबरदास से छनी मैं सदा देती रही तू न आया गाजी जबरदास से छनी मैं सदा देती रही तू न आया सकी न सका सकीना बास बा सकीना सबा जैन का सहारा सबा सका सकीना सका सकी ना तुम ते मेरी चादर की मुहाफिज मेरे भैया तुम सो गए मैदा में मेरा छ गया पर्दा सुर गया मेरा सका सकीना सब जैनब 
का सहारा बा सबा 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 फजल सलाम